Hey, this is Bill from Vac Lab. Hello, all YouTubers. Hello, all you canister fans out there. Got my favorite canister, 1980 Electrolux Olympia 1, 1401B, with my power nozzle. And you can see that's a new vinyl gray hose. That's not the old one. And I've got the wand, and I've got a beard meter. Oh no, I've got a beard meter. Don't worry, you all know that I've measured things with uh, an actual anemometer to get more precise measurements. But this is the fastest way I can actually show you a problem that plagues all canisters. Airflow losses. So come with me as we go on a journey of what happens to airflow in a canister. Now, this guy right here has a tremendous motor in it. Really wonderful. Actually all original. And it has fantastic airflow. In fact, if I'm able to set this up right, this should show about a 9, which would be 108 CFM. So let me see if I can do this holding my camera with one hand. Okay, close enough. So we've got a 9, and that's 108 CFM. Now what happens when you go and you plug a hose in? I wonder if I can do this one-handed very well. Hey, I got it. Okay, so air then goes through a connection, goes around the hose, comes out this nozzle right here. So if I put the adapter on the Baird meter. Now most people actually when they use the hose probably will have at least one loop in it. Probably isn't going to be completely straight. So this is still somewhat realistic to have at least say one loop in it. So let's see what happens to the airflow. Remember we started at a 9. Let's see what this does. Alright, so with the loop in it, which would probably be kind of typical for most people using it, I mean most people don't use the hose completely stretched out straight, we've dropped from a 9 to a 6.5, a 6.5 a is 95 CFM. So we've dropped from 108 down to 95. So you can calculate the loss there. Now we've got to go into a couple of wands. These actually are pretty good wands and they're still pretty tight, in really good shape. This, I don't know if I can get with one hand. Uh, yeah, I guess I did. Alright, that, yeah, that's, that's a tight fit. Can't get any better than that. So, we go through this wand. I'm going to come down to the end of this wand here. Put it in the Baird meter again. Make sure that's tight. And let's see where we are. All right, we're definitely at a solid five and a half. I saw it bouncing a little bit higher than that, but just for the sake of argument, we'll say five and a half. So, to recap, we started here at a nine, which is 108 CFM. Then we went here down to a six and a half, which is 95 CFM. Now we're down to here, which is about five and a half or 89 CFM. So it's dropped quite a bit. Now, what happens when you have a power nozzle and it's got a U-joint right here? So, if you were to somehow vacuum the nozzle completely flat, this actually has the best airflow because the air comes right in straight and then can be most effective continuing straight all the way out into the open nozzle area. But unless you're vacuuming under low furniture all the time you have it at some kind of an angle say 45 degrees well anytime you take air and you bend it it slows down so the problem you run into is additional airflow loss 
and you've got it from this connection, plugging it in here you'll lose a little bit, then having it at a 45 degree angle you'll lose a little bit more, and then also when it comes through the final, uh, we'll say seals, where it spreads out, comes into this open nozzle, of course you've got a seal right around here as well, so all the rest of the internals you have airflow losses as well. And as I've posted on Vacuum Land, this machine set up perfect with the vinyl hose actually stretched out completely straight, which isn't necessarily realistic. We start out at close to 110 here, 108 that we measured, but by the time we come down to the power nozzle, we are left with 75. So that's quite a loss. So you've got to think, if I'm going to spend a lot of money on a canister, what would you rather have for doing your carpets? Something that maybe has 75, 85, maybe 90 nozzle CFM for a real high-end, say, Mela C3, for example. Or you can go to something like this. That one has 137. It's a Centria 2. This one here has about 120, it's a G6. And this old guy here with the new fan in it from 1988 has 121, I think. And that nozzle CFM doesn't change depending on where you go and have the angle of the handle set, you know, how you're actually vacuuming. So every canister has this problem. You experience airflow loss. So more or less, this isn't a bashing canister video. It's just letting you know the problems that canisters run up against. What do you think? Like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.